and this is not necessarily a strictly a Western phenomenon. Uh, so, so let me just speak to you as someone who's really embedded in technology at all. They're rather complementary in the human being. And I believe that in order for us to attain our full human potential, we really need to develop in both areas, both sciences and technologies, and as well, humanities and the arts. And at business meetings like this, there is necessarily a focus on technological innovation and so forth. But the next generation of cell phones is not going to solve our moral problems. Uh, we really need, with all respect to emerging technologies, we need to focus on the humanistic side of our being. So, uh, this is where I will concentrate my, my comments, okay? Um, I had the privilege a few years ago of being uh, in Abu Dhabi for the Festival of Thinkers. And I was very impressed to see what uh, Sheikh Nakayan is to really reach and to surpass the leading edge of that side of uh, globalization. Science, technology, we know how important it is. So it, it's really great to be here to have a chance to emphasize that complementary part. We have two hemispheres in our brain, ladies and gentlemen. We have, we have a left hemisphere and a right hemisphere. And the left is the one in which most of the scientific, logical, analytic, and reasoning activity takes place. And the right one is where our intuitions, our creativity, our artistic abilities reside. And just as most of us have a dominant hand, I assume all of you are either right-handed or left-handed, we also have a dominant eye, a dominant leg, and probably dominant here. And so you may know people who are more left-brained or more right-brained, but surely we need both hemispheres for, for full functionality. And once again, that means we need to develop the humanistic and the artistic one. So some examples. The idealists in the latter half of the 19th century, Emerson and Thoreau uh, and, and all of their friends, were enormously creative and productive. And don't underestimate their influence. You know, this fellow Thoreau lived in a cabin on Walton Pond for a couple of years and wrote a very slim volume on civil disobedience, which ended up having an enormously transformative effect, not only on Tolstoy and his works, but also, of course, on Gandhi in India and Dr. King in the United States. So these works that come out of uh, golden ages of humanistic thought can actually have enduring and peaceful impact on social and political change. So we, uh, uh, as I said, at CCNY have students from 150 uh, different countries and all of the major cultural groups, uh, from the Muslim students who wrote uh, after a, a Buddhist philosophy class uh, in my talk. And I don't teach Buddhism as a religion at all. Uh, because I'm sort of a heretic. I believe it's a beautiful philosophical system uh, which embodies precepts for attaining potential. But it's not a religion. There's no God involved at all. So it's not competitive with any other religion. It's merely a philosophical But students only in And then there's also that startup scene. All these together, they're looking at any chain of entrepreneurship, startup education, and can become a startup. It's there, but one thing is missing. If you look at the Silicon Valley recipe, how does it happen? It has education. When it started, it had education. Which was it? Stanford then? You see, but it had the workforce, the graduate state. So they tried to encourage these startups to become successful. And then they had, they had that infrastructure, or the legal system, the financial system, everything was there in Silicon Valley. But one thing which we really lack, and that is the main one, is the gas. And the industry, plus we will, we have to support like ICD fund, and they have the uh, Sheikh Mohammed Rashid SME, there's N5, there is a, uh, uh, that's 5224, is that 5224? 2454, yes, yeah, These are the ones actually helping to create that VC uh, environment, the uh, locomotive driver. The reason is, if you have a son and he gets a nice job, will you tell him go and become a driver? He won't. So opportunities are there, are there, and that's why they don't want to go the outside. So we should start from early, as you said, from KG, from start to give, to change that culture. When they go to secondary school, they know they're going to university not because to learn, but because to become an entrepreneur. That will help them as a tool to become an entrepreneur. These all things together will make UAE, in the Arab 
part of the world or the MENA to go correctly towards uh, knowledge basically. One of the things that I don't like also that comes always uh, those indices, I mean, uh, some one index here or index there, and they're trying to tantalize the government and telling it UAE is the best in KEI knowledge.